The bullying that pushed Toshiro Ehara over the edge echoes a previous tragedy. Years before, another boy attempted suicide and remains comatose. Yagami makes his way to Sawa Sensei's apartment, hoping to get some answers that will shed some light on the incident. But, as if by coincidence, he encounters Kuwana instead. What ties could an earnest school teacher and an underground handyman share? Kawana? What the hell are you doing here? You forget to mention you had a connection to Sawa Sensei? Or what? Awkward. Do you or not? And don't pretend you're just here to fix a toilet. Yo! <laughs> <laughs> Now it's RK on top of you? Yagami, we've got more incoming. What is this? These idiots aren't after you. It's me they really want. And I just walked into their trap. What could they possibly want with you? To come all the way from Kamurocho? Akutsu, what is this about? Why do you want her? Looks like they don't feel like talking about it. Get these two fuckers first. <sighs> but try to leave them breathing if you can.
Sawa Sensei. Yes. Don't open your door until the cops get here, okay? I have to go make sure Kuana's all right. But what about you, Yakuza? I'm fine. But actually, how do you and Kuana know each other? Sawa Sensei? Fine. Just please stay in your room, okay? Hey! The hell you looking at? Not trying to get in our way, are you? Yeah, I am. But I'm in a hurry myself, so I'm not gonna hold back, all right? Yeah? Big words for a little shit. You're nothing without your friend Kaito. Motherfucker. Hey, check it out. It's Yagami. Hey, trying to screw with RK again? Then you better be ready to get your ass kicked. Aren't you the one screwing with me? Besides, I'm not behind any of this. All right, enough of your bullshit. You better say a quick prayer, asshole. Kuana! Hey, been waiting for you. You a slow runner or something? Uh, they got here before I did. Yagami, sticking your nose in our business again. How about I stick you in an oil barrel and see if you float? That's a halfway decent threat this close to the sea. Ooh, the great detective sounds intimidated. If we make it out of this, I've got some questions that need answering. Sawa Sensei won't talk. I wouldn't worry about the future. <laughs> Your life is coming to an end soon. Yagami! Sawa-sensei. 
stay down, would you? <sighs> Not happening. Good luck, Yagami Kun. Dragon! Hey, Kawana! Oh, fine. At least you could have done to say thank you. We ain't done, Yagami! I get you want to play tough, but... Do you ever quit? It's not over till it's over, you little shit. The hell's that? Sawa-sensei! Stop it! Someone's here too? I wouldn't have expected you and this bitch to be connected. What the hell do you think you're doing? This has nothing to do with her. You're the detective, aren't you? You figure it out. Huh? Time's up. Toss his phone before we go any further. His GPS will lead his friends straight to us. Hey, 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 hey. Yagami. Yagami. Rise and shine. 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 There he is. I was starting to worry you might not wake up. My men are glorified amateurs at this stuff. The technique for knocking someone out takes practice to get down. Soma? Oh good, no brain damage. Man, I'm glad you're tough as nails. Now we can get to the fun part, huh? Yagami-san here just saved your asses. You wouldn't be standing if he didn't come around. There's no way we could have known this asshole would show up. Not my fault everything went to shit. This was your operation anyway. Fine, it's okay. But you need to make sure you keep your boys in check from here on. Huh? <laughs> Did that hurt? <sighs> it hurt, right? See? You all see? First comes pain, and then the fear. You have to start with pain. Fear won't work if you haven't given them reason. Slap them around, but you do need to keep them conscious. Enough to keep the fear alive. That's how you get what you want to hear. Am I right? I can tell when someone's lying. My superiors found that useful. Probably why they kept me around. Now, no playing dumb and none of your tricks. Don't underestimate me. Yagami-san. So, what's the deal between you and that lady teacher? Uh, we're colleagues, as of a few days ago. What the fuck are you talking about? Stay out of this, Akutsu. Huh? 
I'm telling you to shut up and leave this to me. I'm focusing. Besides, Yagami-san here is telling us the truth. <sighs> He's just being a little vague, is all. So what do you mean, Sawa-sensei's your colleague? I was asked to look into a bullying case at Serio High. That's all I meant by it. How about that? What'd you do to her? Oh, she's sound asleep now, I'm sure. Our business isn't with her, anyway. You want Kiwana? Right. About that. You keep calling him Kiwana. That's not who we know him as. Huh? Kiwana is his alias. A fake name? That's right. So tell me, what is he? What do you know him for? <sighs> you get two seconds to answer. What does this Kuana guy do? He's a handyman. In Ijincho. Everybody knows him. He's been taking jobs in the area for a long time now. A handyman, huh? Well, from the way it sounds, you haven't known each other very long. <sighs> yeah. His real name's Kitakata. Ring any bells? Well, there you have it. Your face says you have no idea what the hell I'm talking about. <laughs> so then, any idea where your Kuwana-san went? We have some business with him. I wouldn't tell you even if I knew. Of course you wouldn't. And I suppose that's not a lie. But it's probably more accurate to say you don't know where he is, either. Turns out you don't have a damn thing on him. <sighs> Shit. Know what that means? <sighs> it means you have no more use for me. Shame to be smart and still lose, huh? Now I got a question for you. Did you really think you'd walk out of here alive? Or is it gonna be in a body bag? The fear in your eyes tells me everything I need to know. And you're probably right. <laughs> you aren't going to enjoy what little time you have left. It's going to be painful as hell. Because I'll be the one enjoying it. What brings you to a gene show and after a teacher? And why Kawana too? How do you even know him? I could tell you this little part and give, couldn't I? Except I ain't feeling so generous. <laughs> Fire that thing up. Get him on his feet. And I don't want to see him squirming. Not every day you get a chance like this. Record this shit. Yo. How quickly can a chainsaw kill a guy should be the video title when we upload it. This kind of shit gets so many views. Am I right, Yagami? We'll go in slow and get your fingers all cut to shreds. <laughs> we'll take that up to the right wrist, then we'll switch over to the left side. Right forearm, left forearm. Why don't we make this formal? Take first dibs. You show us how it's done. You, you want me to do it? Time to man up. 
We gotta show the world what happens when you fuck with R.K. Killing shits like him is what puts hair on your chest, guys. Just try not to kill him until everyone gets a turn. Get to work! But, but sir... Figure it out. Akutsu. He won't do it himself, you know. Huh? Recording it puts the evidence of a murder out there on video. And he won't be on it. But you guys will be. Who do you think they'll come for, moron? You still talking? Fill your intestines on the fucking floor! Yo! We've got company! Kaito? How the hell? How'd you fucking find us here? Uh, Kaito san. Sakura? Suppose I ought to thank you boys for keeping Tak nice and comfortable, Akutsu. Yeah, but we were just getting to the grand finale. You two can have front row seats. I'll pass. This show kinda sucks. Block all the doors! These three are fucking dead. You hear me, boys? I don't want anyone leaving the building! Good call. I don't want anyone leaving either. Not till I'm done with you. Don't be a tough guy, Talk. Feel free to take a breather if you need to. I don't know about that, Kaito-san. He's got that look. That's the face he makes when he's got a score to settle and some ass to kick. You still haven't gotten your fill of this, Yagami? <laughs> I'll admit, this is kind of fun, man. Maybe killing you would be a mistake. I've got an even better idea. I'll tie you up and keep you as a pet. You know what? I think I could punch you as many times as I want right now. But in circumstances such as they are, no one could even blame me. Huh? I'm saying I've earned a little payback, Akatsu. Let's go! Come <laughs> on. 
the hell does RK want with Kuan? What did he do? Tell me how Sawa Sensei and Kuan are connected. You ask too many questions, you fucking asshole. Tell me, why go to all the effort in Kamurojo to find Shinya Kawai? What are you trying to do? I'll get you! Man, that guy's invincible. And he's faster than he looks. Asshole. He knew it was a lost cause, so he took off at the first opportunity. I'm guessing that's why he was holding back. Are you serious? He couldn't be that sharp. Nah. He's definitely got some skills, and we better start taking him seriously. I had no idea you went through so much. I'm just glad you had the mind to tip off Kaito-san that I wasn't picking up your calls. That got Tsukumo to track my phone over GPS and locate me using the town security cameras. Long story short, you saved me. I had to try something. I'm the one who dragged you into this, after all. But you know, the first person to suspect something was Higashi-san. He thought it was strange for you to be suddenly unavailable. <laughs> Better thank him, too. By the way, I'd like to share the details I recently gathered on Shinya Kawai. Kawai was a bully at Kurokawa Academy. Five years ago, he was abducted by individuals thought to be his acquaintances. A worker at a girls' bar witnessed this, and based on that, RK apparently deduced that Kawhi was murdered. Got it. Then I suggest you steer clear of RK as much as possible. They fly off the handle faster than the Yakuza. Right. I never imagined things would get this dangerous. We just got back to Sawasensei's apartment. I thought RK was in Kamrocho looking for Kawhi. But they came to ambush a handyman named Kawana. Did you say handyman? Yeah, but he plays a wider field than your average Mr. Fixit. He's popular on the Jincho Underground. Even Kawana was a fake name. And this mystery man has some connection to Sawa Sensei? Yeah, and I'm about to ask her about him directly. I need to get everything I can out of her this time. Understood. We're still dealing with a lot of unknowns, so take care of yourself, okay? I'll be all right. I'm with two guys I can trust now. Yo, what's Sawa Sensei's room number? Just hold your horses. I'm coming with you. Sure is quiet. This is where the fight went down? Yeah. But to look at it, you wouldn't think anything had happened here. <clears throat> Sawa Sensei? You there? Geogamy. What's up? The door. It's unlocked. Huh? Sawa Sensei? No! Wait, talk!
Yeah. That's fine. I get it. You don't want us touching anything inside the room. Is it okay to wait for you inside then? Some private investigators from Kamurocho. Yagami-san and Kaito-san. Yeah, I asked them to help us out with a case we were on a couple days ago. Yes, see you soon. They're coming. The cops are on their way. All right. She was murdered at the hands of Soma. Master. You lied when you said they had no business with her. Why did it have to be her? How did she get pulled into all this? If it's answers you want, you gotta be a detective, talk. We can see the kind of shit that normal people miss. We'll notice what they can't. For now, can you put aside the pain and do the work you need to do? I think he's right. First, let's narrow our focus. It's not about who or how she was murdered. What's more important here is to figure out the answer to the why. Let's consider her connections. We know one of them was to Kowanda the Handyman. Where that leads is that Soma's gang was after Kowanda, and that's why they broke in. In that case, the clues that we're after here are her personal relationships. There's our lead. Something that shows how a teacher could be connected to a guy like Kuwana. Yeah. Except Kuwana's a fake name, just his alias. His real name was... Kitakanta. Soma gave us that. Hey. Suspicious. Blood. Not a lot, though. Yeah, looks like it. Hey. Yagami-san, isn't that your book from when Sawa-sensei went to Kurokawa Academy? Wouldn't there be photos of people like Yui Mamiya and that bully Kawaii in there? Oh. Yeah, you're probably right. Weird that there's so much blood around it. Maybe she was trying to leave us a clue. What do you want to do? Take a peek inside? Kind of frowned on the mess of the murder scene, yeah? If you're gonna look, make it quick. The cops will be here any minute. There's not enough time to check the whole thing. I'm gonna hang on to it for now. I'll turn it over to the police later. It's now or never. I won't get another chance to come back to this room. You gonna take it? Really? Is that even legal? Of course not. But fuck legal this time. Those shady Kurokawa Academy graduates might be connected to Mikoshiba's murder. But we're the only ones with that lead right now. The cops could turn this place upside down and still miss that. Hmm, good point. It's better off with us, then. Feel like that's what Sawa-sensei wanted. Uh... It's now or never. Sugiyura, we'll deal with the cops. You take the yearbook and get out of here. Uh, I have to play the thief? Play? Isn't that exactly what you fucking did back in Kamurocho? Why you gotta bring that up? Fine, fine, I'll do it. There's one visible wound here. What do you think, Kaito-san? Sure is tiny. Think she was stabbed with some kind of long needle? An ice pick, most likely. Soma was holding one up to her. Hmm. What 
это. See. So, Hotshot, according to you, the guy who killed Sawa Sensei was. Kazuki Soma. He's the leader of a bunch of thugs in Kamrajo known as RK. Yeah? Well, great. Case closed. Then what's your take on the murder scene, Nabe san? Tone it down, buddy. Remember who's got the badge here. There are footprints of several different men who have been in Sawa Sensei's room. That includes yours, by the way. We'll be analyzing these footprints first, and we'll check any security footage in the surrounding area. We'll ask around for eyewitnesses and narrow down our suspects. And we'll look into RK2, of course. Appreciate your help with that, Detective Yagami. I just saw the coroner walk in. You saw the body too, right? Yeah, just to get a rough idea. Her body will be taken in for an autopsy. Does your rough idea include the cause and time of death? Cause of death? A single stab from behind into the nape of the neck with a weapon similar to an ice pick. As for the time, we're estimating she's been dead for about three hours. Three hours? That means it must have been right after I saw her on my phone. Nabe-san. The police need to get a warrant for Soma. We're asking HQ about him as we speak. We need at least a damn mugshot for a warrant. Then isn't it time to hit the street and get in some thug faces? Assume any face you don't recognize is from RK. I get how you feel, ma'am, but pull it together. Actually, I'm curious about that Kuwana fella, too. He's lived in Ijincho forever. Why were Kamrocho thugs after him? And now I hear Kuwana isn't even his real name? He and Sawa since they were connected, but how? I'm looking for those same answers myself. <sighs> so you know jack shit about anything important. But you can go on home. And just make sure we can reach you. Sure about this, Nabe-san? Yeah. Assholes like him work better on a loose leash. Foul-mouthed as fuck. But not bad, Pops. Ah. <sighs> What now? Nabe-san, aren't you gonna ask me about Ahara? You know I went to see him in prison. Oh, that. You saw the video of Ahara killing Mikoshiba, didn't you? I was coming to talk to Sawa-sensei about it. Your point? I think there may have been a link between what happened to Sawa-sensei and Mikoshiba's murder. In which case, wouldn't you want to pump Ahara for information? Why aren't you jumping on that? We got orders from the top that Ahara's off limits. Forever. They said if we want to try to peg him as Mikoshiba's killer, we'd have to completely flip the guilty verdict on his harassment case. Not exactly the kind of shit a beat cop can pull off. Besides, nobody seems to want to investigate the Mikoshiba murder. Not us, not HQ, not even the prosecution. So cops get to just quit working an investigation because they don't feel like it? <laughs> If there was even a hope we could close it, every cop here would be all over it. Everyone knows Ahara stinks to high hell. And they still won't let us touch the goddamn thing. It's above our pay grade. I bury the case so deep it never sees the light of day. Yeah, feels like Sawa Sensei's case is about to get the same treatment. Hey, I told you to watch it, buddy. Save the dirty looks for your superiors. They're the bastards so desperate to sweep this under the rug. Hell do you! Cool it, Sakurai. I... 
I know this is all very sudden. We don't have many details yet. And as you've heard, the police are working to find answers as we speak. Sawa-sensei... Well... She got mixed up in some sort of... incident. This may attract press to the school, and some of them may even wish to speak to you, but... Please, do your best to ignore them. Again, we don't have all of the facts, and it's not for all of you to... Well... None of you are under any obligation to speak to them, so please, don't. All that I can ask, for now... Spare a prayer for Sawa-sensei, please, if you can. Please. Please. <laughs> okay. We better get everyone back to class. Starting with the third years. Excuse me, Yagami-san? If you don't mind, Chairman Okuda said he'd like to speak with you if you would be on campus today. It's about Sawa-sensei. Yeah, I can do that. Will he be in his office? Yes. Thank you for everything, sir. Yagami-san. Oh. Hey. I still can't believe what happened to Sawa-sensei. Yeah. I know. Do you know anything about it? I saw the scene of the crime. I was the first one to find her. What? The killer's still on the loose. But I know who it is. Is there any way I can help? Maybe you could share some details about the case. No. Not this time. This one's too dangerous. I'm not gonna get you involved. But... Just leave Sawa-sensei's case to me. Don't you have your own cases to solve? Yagami-san... <sighs> okay. Listen. You're a brilliant kid. You can't afford to let this throw you off your game, right? Yes. You're absolutely right. If I let that happen, it'll damage the MRC's credibility. Exactly. So here's what I'm thinking, Amasawa. Let's just carry on like normal. And please spread the word to the rest of the MRC. That'd help me out a bunch. Yes. I can do that. Enter. Thank you for coming. Sure. No problem. Have a seat, if you would. In that detective's report, Sawa-sensei was... Well, it said you were the one who found her body. That's right. You had been concerned for Sawa-sensei's safety before the incident. You're able to see things I can't. You have something of a gift for that, Yagami-san. I wish I could agree with that. But... I'm overlooking details. I'm letting too much slip away. And quite frankly, there's still a lot that I haven't figured out yet either. Like what? May I have an example? There's this local handyman. Kawana is the name he goes by in the city. Right before it happened, I ran into him in front of Sawa-sensei's apartment. There's no way it was a coincidence. So, you think he could be the culprit? Actually, I don't think so. Not really. That said, Kawana has something to do with all this. Sawa-sensei may have gotten caught up in his mess. In fact, Kawana is just an alias he uses and he's being hunted by these thugs from Kamrocho. 
They're a gang called RK, and it's weird, but they've been looking for this punk named Kawai. And Kawai's connected to it, too. Sawa sensei went to the same school as him 13 years ago. Wow, these details are flying so far over my head. Your investigation has gone well beyond what I can comprehend, and it's left me in the dust. But I just can't do this anymore. Between my own faculty and the press, I'm being bombarded. I'm afraid it's just too much for me to bear. I'm sorry to hear that. But you know what? What's been the hardest part? Is feeling so powerless as all these young people have their lives cut short. Because Shibukun being discovered dead. Ehara-san committing murder on video. And now poor Sawa-sensei's tragedy too. I can't help but feel in my heart that these incidents are related. That somewhere below the surface all these misfortunes are connected to the same root. I would have to agree. Then I suppose it's only a matter of digging down deep enough. Though I couldn't begin to imagine how much soil would have to be turned to uproot it. But one thing, Yakimi-san, if you would. Could I ask that you continue to keep digging until you get to the bottom? Can you? Sawa-sensei deserves to have her chance at justice. A wonderful teacher like her. Why? She had her whole future to look forward to, the poor woman. And now this happens. It's just not right. As it stands, I still need to collect more evidence. So you know, I can't make any promises just yet. I could hit a dead end. But... No matter what anyone does, no matter who tries to stop me, I'm gonna keep digging. You're a saint. These past few days have felt like a never-ending nightmare. What a breath of fresh air. And I appreciate the good news. Of course. I'm glad we could talk, Chairman. And now, Sawa Sensei's old class is going to be my next worry. I'm sure you're well aware that that class has some students with a pension for causing trouble. I fear that with her gone, we may need to prevent a relapse for those bullies you stopped. Are you referring to Kodasan then? Hmm. I understand. While I'm working on campus, I'll keep an eye on them. Yagami-san, what do you want? You know, things have been really weird around here ever since you showed up. First, they find Mikoshiba-sensei's body. Now Sawa-sensei winds up getting murdered. You the angel of death or something? Is that it? I wouldn't blame you for thinking that. Everyone's so damn gloomy. It sucks. Sawa-sensei was popular with all the boys. But her classes were super easy, and honestly pretty boring. You won't catch me moping around crying about it like all these losers. Ha ha! <laughs> Hypocrites. 
You assholes were practically celebrating what happened to Mikoshiba Sensei. Hey, we've heard enough out of you. Yeah? Fuck off, you little twerp! What do you want, Coda? Yagami-san, we're fine. There's a lot we don't understand, so we just feel a bit vulnerable right now. But, um, well, if you learn more about Sawa-sensei, could you please keep us in the loop, too? Oh, please, bitch! What's with this goody-two-shoes bullshit? Fucking chill, Akane. What's your problem? Like I said before, I'm a detective, and I'm looking into Hiro Mikoshiba's murder. That's why I was talking to Sawa-sensei. It's highly likely she got wrapped up in that case. So make no mistake, I'm going to find the truth about what happened to them both. <laughs> Kinda pointless. The internet's already branded Mikoshiba sensei as the villain in all this. Everyone says he had it coming since he used to be a bully himself. Yeah, I know. Anyway, if you're interested in hearing my report, just drop me a line. Maybe seeing my work might put things into perspective for you. <laughs> Detective my ass. Just get out of my face! So, about Akane. She was really into Mikoshiba Sensei. They got along great, chatted all the time. Then all of a sudden, he just disappeared. She thought they had a connection, but turns out it was only one way. Now she's always so pissed off. Keeps driving herself over the edge because she can't even reach the brakes. <sighs> I'm not saying all this because I expect you to forgive us. The fact that you recognize you did some awful things is a step in the right direction at least. I'm sorry, Coda. For everything we did to you. <sighs> you can't expect her to ever forgive you. If anything, expect that she never will. <sighs> I know. That said, good job apologizing. Thanks. Welcome back, Tak. Good to see you, Yagamishi. How'd things go at school? The chairman told the entire student body about Sawa-sensei at an assembly. Everyone's pretty shaken up. Yeah. I can't even imagine. Oh, I still can't wrap my head around what I saw last night. We have to avenge Sawa-sensei. Right, Tak? I gave the yearbook I took from her room yesterday to Sukumo. Why don't you check it out later, Yagami-san? We've been waiting for you, Yagamishi. Let's plan our next moves. Are you ready? Yeah. Let's do it. While in a meeting yesterday, Sawa-sensei received a call that her apartment was broken into, prompting her to go home. Judging from the events that followed, R.K. must have called her using the apartment manager's name. And that's how they got to Sawa-sensei. But R.K. wasn't after Sawa-sensei. They were actually after Kuwana, weren't they? Yeah. Akutsu and Soma both said so. I think Sawa-sensei was used to lure Kuwana out. 
Why would Sawa Sensei be bait to draw out Kuana? How the hell are those two connected? That too, but why is RK even after Kuana san? Thugs from Kamurocho want a handyman in Ijincho? Right. There's still a lot we don't know. We need to find Kuana before RK does and get some answers out of him. Kuana isn't even his real name. Apparently, it's Kitakata. RK didn't seem to be familiar with the name Kuana. Truth is, we don't know anything about Kuana. All we know is that he's a handyman in Ijincho. I haven't been able to contact Kuana-san since yesterday, but I left a message asking him to reply. Where's the office for his handyman business? He ran his whole operation from a cell phone. Not even his business card lists an address. Oh yeah, Kaito-san. Didn't you call up all the places we went drinking? Did you find out where he lives? Yep, just found out. Looks like Kuana lives in some kind of prefab shack off West Central Street. Sounds like pretty shitty conditions for a guy charging up the ass for his time. Well, if we know that much, we might as well go take a look. <laughs> I was hoping you'd say that. Tsukumo, we'll talk more later. <laughs> you never slow down, Yagamishi. Let's hit it. this Kiwana's place? Yeah, I think so. Guess it's kind of fitting for an unlicensed handyman. What the? Huh? What is it? The door's been forced open. Maybe with a crowbar or something. If anyone was in here before us, it had to have been RK. Aside from us, they're the only ones after him. That means they're already a few steps ahead of us. Our K's got the numbers behind him. We can't beat him to the punch every time. I don't think Kawan has been back since last night. He probably caught on that he's a wanted man. He might not even be in Ijin Cho anymore. Then what do we do here? His real name's supposedly Kitakata. I want to know who he really is and why he used a fake name. That'll make his connection to Sawa Sensei clearer. So you want to find clues that point to his true identity? Is that what you're saying? <laughs> Took the words right out of my mouth, Kaito san. What the? Kuana mentioned his ties to the underground. But I get the feeling this kind of work was his bread and butter. Collecting junk, walking pets, fixing pipes, taking any odd job that comes his way. Not so different from us. A handyman, a detective, it's two sides of the same coin. Suspicious. Cigarettes. Are these Kiwanas? I don't think so. Pretty sure he's been vaping. But maybe he craved the real deal every now and then. Yeah, people do smoke both depending on the situation. Hey. The 
they made one hell of a mess in here. Bet they had no clue what they were doing. Looks like they just wanted to trash the place. Yep, pretty much screams RK. Nothing more than a bunch of punks. What the? Hmm? Is this a computer power cable? There's a mouse here too. There was a laptop here. RK must have taken it. There's probably a treasure trove of info on it. And RK's got anything of value out of this place already. Come on, don't be emo. Hey. An ashtray. Huh. That's weird. What? With all the gross garbage in here, this ashtray is oddly empty. Think so? Suspicious. What the? I mean, yeah, it's clean and all, but so what? Could just be freshly empty. Except it hasn't been washed, or even used in a while. See the layer of dust on it? Okay, and? You think a dusty ashtray is gonna get us Kuwana's identity? Maybe. Or maybe it's nothing. Yo, hold up, Tuck. We don't have enough on Kuwana to go after him. You sure you want to go back empty-handed? I feel like I checked everything worth looking at. Well, maybe there's more to something you looked at already. Besides, where else are we going to find dirt on Kuwana if we leave? Hey. What the? Hmm. Hey, these cigarettes. There's something about them. Kawana usually smokes e-cigarettes. The ashtray looks virtually unused. What are you getting at? I don't think Kawana's smoking these cigarettes. Then why keep what you don't smoke? See, we gotta be more thorough. Hey, look at this lighter. What now? Whoa. A USB memory stick disguised as a lighter. Damn. Did you just hit the jackpot or what? That has to be important if Kuwana was hiding it like this. What matters is the data on it. We'd be able to check it now if we had a computer. Then why don't we head back to Tsukumo's? Oh, it got dark. Huh? What's the matter, Tuck? Looks like a meet and greet. Oh, yeah? <sighs> Think they're RK? Well, they're the only ones looking for Kuana other than us, right? Don't see Soma or Akutsu, though. So, sent the fucking B team. Probably for the best. If Soma was here, I don't think I can stay cool. Yeah, me neither. Which one of you is gonna talk? Where are Soma and Akatsu? There's no point talking to a dead man. Uh-huh. Well, if that's how you're gonna play it. And we're not holding back either.
Where are Soma and Akatsu? I want to talk to them. We can't contact them, I swear. They're the ones who contact us. It's always been like that. Uh, figured as much. <sighs> Most of the RK crew are just chumps. Yeah. I bet even Soma is just another piece on the board, taking orders from the real mastermind. Thugs don't work gigs that don't pay. Yet they came to Ijinsho, outside their turf, to commit murder. That's true. Sounds like someone's funding them. Must be some generous perks. Definitely. Otherwise, Soma and the others wouldn't be causing so much chaos over here. Then, who's the one pulling RK's strings? I don't know who it is, but I know what he's trying to do. Which is? Catch Kuwana. RK is just following orders. Sawa Sensei was probably collateral damage. Yeah, that makes sense. Shit. I swear I'm gonna drag this bastard out on his ass. If we keep looking for Kuana, we'll run into the one behind this all eventually. And this could be our first clue. Then we'd better get back to Sukumo's. What's going on out here? Are you friends of Kuana san's? Uh, yeah, we are. And those gentlemen on the ground? Those guys. Oh, yeah, they're just wasted. Little nap and they'll head right on home. Ah, I see. <laughs> well, that's just fine. Excuse me, but you know Kawana, don't you? Sure. I mean, he's lived next door for the last ten years. But he's a handyman. Anytime we were short-handed, he'd come by and help us out. We'd pay him with our daily special. Uh, I haven't heard from Kiwana since last night. Do you happen to know any places he visits often? Let's see. Uh, he has an uncle that took him in when he first came to Yokohama. Called him a distant relative or something. He's an ex-Yakuza running a bar since he got out of the game. Apparently, this uncle is how he started getting gigs around town. What did Kawana do before he became a handyman? Hmm. Beats me. Uh, maybe some kind of corporate job? I don't think I've ever asked. Where can we find Kuana's uncle's bar? Oh, the bar's called Siren. It's over in Chinatown. I've been there two or three times myself. The owner's a real nice guy. Hard to tell he was ever a Yakuza. Then we better get over there too. Can't afford to fall behind RK again. Let's hurry. Thanks for everything. And sorry for bothering you. Oh, don't mention it. Let's roll, Tom. Really, guys? Let's what the Siren. This is it, Tuck. This is the bar Kuana's relative runs. Hello? Anybody here? This place empty too? It's definitely messy in here, but it wasn't exactly ransacked. Yeah, more like someone had to skip town in a hurry. Did the owner already make a break for it then? Be smart if he did. What with RK about to come hunt down Kuwana and all.
Hey, uh, the name of this place was Siren, wasn't it? Huh? Yeah. Hi. You've reached Siren? Soma, that was well played. How silly of me. This pretty little thing is for women. Have I told you what RK stands for yet? It's red knife. You son of a... Soma! The owner must have smelled trouble coming. He took off before I could find him. Tell me. Why did you kill Sawa Sensei? Uh, I'm afraid she knew too much. And that's all. And that's all? You're in the same boat. We can't afford to ignore you anymore. And you already made a mistake. You didn't kill me when you could have. I'll own up to that. Akutsu wasn't equipped to handle the task. Well then, now you pay the price for it. Will I? Kaito's down and you're by yourself. Should be easy. Well, you're scrappy, aren't you? Impressive. Maybe I should have prioritized stabbing you over Kaito. Uh, 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 you're kind of struggling to stand, aren't you? Give it a second. That kick went to your temple. I'm sure your head is spinning. Trying to rush it will only make it worse. Incidentally, Sawa sensei didn't suffer long like you will. What the hell? <laughs> Whoever that is has terrible timing. What the hell are you doing in my bar? Hello? Is this the owner? Yes. Kuanakun warned me you'd show up. I decided I'd get out of there before you did. Don't expect that I'll ever come back either. All I wanted with Guanasan was to have a little chat. No need to go running for your lives now. <laughs> Spare me the lies. I already know you broke into a young woman's home and killed her. Come on. You wouldn't even hesitate on an old man in his 70s. Pass the phone to Yagami-san, please. Otherwise, I'm calling the cops over there. What could you possibly want with him? 
Quit stalling and give him the phone. Unless you'd rather I push a button and call the cops. I'm done talking to you. The owner of the bar would like a word with you. Sorry, but this will have to wait. Can you get an ambulance over to your bar right away? My partner took a knife to his abdomen. What? Please, you have to hurry! I only showed up at your bar so I could ask you about Kiwana. Does this mean you want something in return? We'll get that sorted out. If you promise to meet me alone. No, I won't be at Survive for long. If you don't make it in ten minutes, you'll never hear from me again. That's one way to motivate someone. <laughs> Clock's ticking, by the way. So, Survive in the Entertainment District? Correct. See you soon. It better be. Apologies for the wait. Let's go. I only showed up at your bar so I could ask you about Kuwana. Does this mean you want something in return? We'll get that sorted out. If you promise to meet me alone. No, I won't be at Survive for long. If you don't make it in ten minutes, you'll never hear from me again. Yagami-san, glad you could make it. You're the owner of Siren? Yeah. Let's take this to the bar. Follow me. So, I hear you're a Kamurocho detective. Yeah, and you're a distant relative of Kiwana's. Can I ask your name? No need. This will be the only time we meet. But to Kiwana-kun, I guess you'd call me his uncle-in-law. <laughs> Everyone's got a dumbass uncle in the family. And that's me. After all, I'm ex-Yakuza. Based in Yokohama? Yeah, the Seryu clan. After I got out, I looked after the shop for 20 years, till today. You mean Siren, right? What'll happen to it once you've skipped town? <laughs> None of your concern. Fair enough. 
Guess you detective types can't help but ask questions. So you two are related. I noticed you didn't mention Kiwana being an alias. Huh. Done your homework, I see. His real name's Kitakata. At least, that's what the Kamurocho thugs call him. You're trying to see if I'll give up his name. That's not why I'm here. Okay. Why did you call me exactly? Well, you see... Kuanakun wanted me to stop by his office and grab something for him. Such as? A pack of cigarettes with a lighter inside. Thing is, it was gone by the time I got there. Don't you mean a USB stick made to look like a lighter? Let's not beat around the bush here. See, I figured you'd grabbed it. So of all things, Kawana wanted you to pick this up? Yes. And he prefers to keep that content private. So, if you could just hand that over. Now I'm curious. Care to tell me what's on here? Would you hand it over if I did? No. I'd still need to confirm you told the truth. Can't you tell Kuanakun's backed into a corner here? Asking an old man to help was his only choice. Let's be honest. I couldn't take that thing from you if I wanted to. All I can do is appeal to your sense of decency. Well, I've got to say, that's more persuasive than threats ever would be. But if you really want me to give this up, at least let me see Kuana. I'd consider that, but he's already long gone. He was ready to cut out at the drop of a hat. If that's the case, unfortunately, I'll need to hold on to this. A high school teacher was killed by the thugs that went after Kawana. Her name was Yokosawa, a young woman dedicated to her career. <sighs> I had met her while investigating the murder of a student teacher. But while trying to get her side of the story, I ended up running to Kawana outside her apartment. Do you know anything about this woman? I don't. You're really drawing a blank? You don't know anything about criminals coming all the way from Kamrocho just to get at Kawana? Do you at least know how they're connected to Sawa-sensei? Again, that's a negative. And this flash drive's my only concrete lead? <sighs> If it's so important to Kawana, he should have come himself, rather than send a middleman. Don't be so hard on him. I'm the one who taught him all his tricks. Are you saying Kawana's ex-Yakuza too? Nah, he was just your average civvy before all this. But, circumstances as they were, he had no choice but to go underground. That's when he came to a gene show, and I took him under my wing. I'm the one who suggested the handyman thing. <laughs> but he took to the underground with real gusto. What do you mean, gusto? I'm not just talking him up. He had good reasons for diving headlong into the shadows. Good reasons? Care to give me one or two? You'll understand once you see what's on the lighter. Both Kuanakun's past and his purpose. That takes care of everything I have to say. Not sure it's such a good idea for me to just let you leave. Thinking about stopping me? Wouldn't be wise. This joint doesn't take kindly to that behavior. That's why this is the safest place in a Jinsho, huh? Yep. And I'm glad your face is the last one I'll see in this city.
Excuse me. Geography. I see. Yes. No. Yep. Yagami. Oh, great. It's Claw Guy. You were with the Luma, right? They say you brought your little posse from Tokyo. You like to trust an outsider. Posse? Wait, don't tell me you think I'm RK. They're not even close to me. Hey, Tesso, you got this all wrong. Come <laughs> on. 
Damn it. Come on, man. Who paid you to jump me this time? These Kamurocho douchebags show up, strutting around like they own our city. Then I hear some teacher chick gets killed after a break-in. Fuckers. Someone let him into Ijincho, right? Right? Look, I can see why you're pissed. But you figured coming after me was the answer? Figured I could at least try beating a few out of you. Office visits ain't my style. You've got to appreciate that not everyone plays by gang rules, man. What I don't appreciate is Kamurocho trash. Now why are they here, Yagami? I'd like to find that out myself. But I'll tell you this much, I'm not your enemy. I was first on the scene of that murder. I knew the woman personally. The culprit is RK's leader, a guy named Soma. Shit, you serious? And why is the rest of his crew here with him? A lot of muscle just to ice one lady. They're after a local handyman, Kuwana. You know him? Yeah, matter of fact, I do. Why they want him so bad. I'm looking into that now. Which is why they're still after me. Not to mention they stabbed my partner. So the more you get in our way, the slower this'll go. Mm. Gotcha. You understand then? How's about I make you the deal of a lifetime? Uh... So long as RK's messing around in my city. I don't mind calling you a brother. Really? Just like that? Sure. But I get to be Aniki, of course. You really think this is selling it? What you're missing here is, the Liumong never target a brother. So now, if anyone lays a finger on you, the Liumong's taking their head. Same rule for all the ladies here in Ijincho. Anyone gets fresh, they become fresh meat. You with me on that, brother? Ah, oh, this is gonna take some getting used to. Besides, Making you a brother is the only way we save face for getting our asses handed to us, you know? Ah, uh, now the truth comes out. Anyway, let me know if you get any intel on RK. Especially where that chicken shit Soma might be. Just shoot me your location and it's done. We'll give that teacher her peace. By torturing you to death. I see. Please. Is 
suspicious. 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 Excuse me.
I see. I see. Excuse me. Excuse me. Yes. <laughs> no. Huh? Are 
Are you serious? Yes. I was just thinking of calling you, Yagamishi. I heard Kaito-san got stabbed at Siren. Is that true, Yagami-san? What the hell happened? Look, I promise I'll fill you in, but right now I really need Tsukumo's help. With what? I found a USB drive at Kawanda's hideout. It was disguised to look like a lighter. We have to know what's on it. So... Kaito-san was attacked by that Soma guy, too. Yeah, while we were chasing Kawana, Soma popped up and got him right in the gut. Almost got me, too, to be honest. You're saying one guy almost single-handedly took down the Yagami Detective Agency? That's true. And right after, I got a call from Kawana's purported relative, who wanted me to hand over the flash drive. Apparently, what's on it will tell us Kawana's true identity and goal. When I open it, all I see is one data file. Of what? It's a video. I'll hit play once you guys are all ready. You good? Damn, what's on there? I can't take the suspense. Let's make it full screen. Quit being a little bitch. I told you to take it in the face. Okay, let's do it over again, okay? Suzuki, make sure you're getting this. Yeah, yeah. I'm gonna really fucking nail him this time. Mayo. Ready when you are. Hey, get your ass back. Mitsuru, what did I just say about being a bitch? You asked for it. I'm gonna have to punish ya. Punishment! No. Punishment! Let's hear the punishment, punishment song, everybody! 
Punishment! Punishment! Get ready for Mitchell Construction! Stop! You little shit, did you just kick me? Huh? Too late to get tough now, Mitsuru. We show us what you got. Don't struggle now. Don't we want to see. Now. We gotta get this all on camera. Oh, this is just the most pathetic sight. Oh, oh shit, he's pissing himself. Oh. Oh. Ew, that's so nasty. <laughs> oh, look at this shit! These little shits are the worst. One of them said something about Mitsuru Kusumoto stripping? Yeah, he was Sawa Sensei's classmate. Thirteen years ago, he jumped off the roof of Kurokawa Academy. He's Reiko Kusumoto's son, right? Vice Minister of the Health Ministry? Thirty years old and still in a coma. It seems we've stumbled on private video footage of Mitsuru Kusumoto being bullied. And it was on Kuwana-san's secret flash drive? Why would he have this? I don't know. But his uncle said it's our lead to Kuwana's real identity and motivation. Huh. Uh, just a moment. No. Get your ass back! This frame gives us a good look at the key players' faces. Why don't we try gleaning what we can from it? Sounds good. Let's dig in. Hey. If I'm not mistaken, Shinya Kawai was the bully whose name got out to the public. Yeah. RK was hunting for him in Kamrocha pretty recently, too. I have no doubt the guy in the picture they showed me is the same guy in this video. Once RK came to the conclusion Kawai had been murdered, they came here to Ijincho, hunting down Kawana for whatever reason. Suspicious. This girl recording the bullying on her cell phone. Someone said her name in the video. Suzuki. There's another familiar face. So it all comes circling back to her, huh? Right. This Suzuki girl has a different name now. Yui Mamiya. The victim in the Ahara harassment case. Suzuki was her last name before getting married. Sawa-sensei also told me that Mitsuru Kusumoto and Mamiya were classmates 13 years ago. Yep. So we're looking at Yui Mamiya in high school. Mamiya-san, huh? What's she like underneath it all? Originally, word got around that Shinya Kawai was the one bullying Mitsuru Kusumoto. After watching this, though, the truth of the matter doesn't quite line up. There were really about 10 bullies involved at the time, and Yui Mamiya was one of them. Yeah. If this video got leaked, Mamiya and the other students in it would be in deep shit. They're living out their lives like nothing happened, despite being the ones who drove a kid into a coma. If word got out, they'd be crucified by the public. Their jobs, their families, their lives would all change for the worse. Hmm. Hmm. This guy's face is familiar somehow. Oh, uh, I don't think I've seen him. I don't know him either. Who is he? I think I remember him. I saw him at the crime scene where Mikoshiba's body was. He was with more Kurokawa grads. He showed his ID to the Kanagawa detective. I think his name was Akaike. That gives us an interesting perspective, doesn't it? 
All the people in this bullying video seem to keep popping up around our case. Yeah, but the real question is why was Kawana the one with the video? What the? I feel bad for Mitsuru-kun. No one helped him, even with everything he was going through. Thirteen years ago, his mother was still just some nobody working at the Ministry of Health. She seems to have split with her husband, and looks after her son on her own now. I don't know all the details, though. Hey, crazy theory, but what if this husband she left was actually Kuwana-san? And maybe he recorded this to secretly check on his son? No, Kuwana doesn't look like he could have a 30-year-old kid. Let's look for other possibilities. Uh-huh. Suspicious. September 17th, 13 years ago. It's past 4 p.m., so this would be after school. Oh, wait, this is... Got something? I just cross-referenced the date Mitsuru Kusumoto jumped. September 17th. Oh, shit. That can only mean this video was recorded very shortly before his suicide attempt. The video may have provided some interesting connections, but we still don't have that crucial link. The link being the reason Kuwana-san came to possess this, of course. Right. Kuwana's either the one who recorded it himself, or is at least a recipient of the video from the original witness. Kuwana-san and Sawa-sensei knew each other somehow, right? Well, then, maybe Sawa-sensei recorded it 13 years ago, and then had Kuwana-san look into it as one of his handyman requests. It's possible, but it just feels off. Why is that? Because of what Siren's owner said to me. Okay. You'll understand once you see what's on the lighter. Both Kuwana-kun's past and his purpose. He said we'll know Kuwana's true identity once we watch the video, but that hasn't been the case so far. Yeah. Uh, what identity could we draw from a secret recording of some bullies? Assuming Kuan is in his early 40s, he would have been about 30, 13 years ago. What if he was a school teacher of the students in the video? In that case, we should consult the yearbook Segura she brought back. The one that was in Sawa Sensei's room? You still have yet to look through it. That's right. Uh, let me go get it. The way you're talking, I assume you've already taken a peek? We have, but unfortunately we didn't find Kawana-san's face among the teachers. This is the page for Mitsuru Kusumoto's class. Both Sawa-sensei and Mami are there too. So the homeroom teacher was... this guy. Apparently he witnessed bullies harassing Mitsuru multiple times. Yet he would overlook it. All he did was smile and tell them not to overdo it. It's not Kawana. This is someone else. We checked the rest of the teachers too, but never spotted Kawana-san. Mitsuru Kusumoto. This picture doesn't look like it was shot for a yearbook. Correct. He was most likely already in a coma when photo time rolled around. Sawa-sensei isn't smiling at all in this. Huh. She did mention she blew off her class reunion. In fact, she hadn't kept in touch with her classmates at all. No surprise there. Mitsuru-kun would be bound to come up at some point. This is Yui Suzuki. She's definitely one of the girls in the video. 
Yet another classmate involved with Mitsuru Kusumoto. Seems like a bunch of the students on this page were in the video, huh? Yeah, but I can't find Shinya Kawai in here. Oh, yeah, you're right. He's not in there. If I'm not mistaken, Kawai left the school once he started catching flack for being Mitsuru-kun's bully. At least, that's what I read online. No real evidence yet, but it definitely sounds like how it would have played out. But the truth is, there were more bullies who should have seen consequences besides Kawai. The worst part is that his teacher knew. He even talked to the bullies about it, but all he said was, don't overdo it. But afterward, the public eviscerated him. He had to quit his teaching job. Hold on. If he was dismissed... You figure something out? The homeroom teacher at the time of the incident did take some flack. He got forced out of teaching. Yeah? What of it? If that's the case, couldn't this teacher in the yearbook just be filling in for the other one? I see. That definitely sounds likely. Let me search for the original teacher's name. There's a chance he won't be the same guy in the yearbook. Just give me a sec. Hmm. Yagamishi, I found it. The name of Mitsuru Kusumoto's former homeroom teacher. You were right. It wasn't the same teacher in the yearbook. This one's name is Yu Kitakata. Kitakata? Huh? Don't tell me that's... His real name's Kitakata. Ring any bells? That's Kawana's real name. Soma said it to me once. So, Kuwana-san was the original homeroom teacher? I just found a picture. This is Kitakata-sensei from 13 years ago. It's Kawana. That's him, all right. Yeah. Not only that, Sawa-sensei was part of this class, which makes Kawana her homeroom teacher, too. This is the link we've been looking for. Everything has clicked into place. Kawana-san was the linchpin of this case. So, 13 years ago, Yu Kitakata left teaching behind after Mitsuru-kun's incident and became Kawana the handyman. That's what made him turn to his uncle at Siren for help. He told me Kawana tried really hard to make it in the underground, had some good reason for it. For living a life in the shadows? What could that have been? get revenge on the bullies. Maybe Kawana blames the fact that he had to quit teaching on the bullies who caused it to happen. Then, maybe all his hatred got aimed at Shinya Kawai? Possible. He was abducted five years ago by individuals thought to be his acquaintances. Huh. You think one of them was Kawana-san? I wouldn't rule it out. RK might have learned of Kawana's involvement while searching for Kawai. Maybe they came to a gene show so they could get details on the incident from him? Yes, that would explain RK's arrival in town as well. Wh hold up. Individuals who were his acquaintances? Meaning more people besides Kuwana-san, right? Could that mean... You got it. We already know this. Oh. The students in the video? Individuals acquainted with Kawai. They certainly fit the bill. But why would they wind up abducting him? Huh. Maybe Kawana asked for their help? No. He forced them to. What makes you say that? Well, Kawana had this on a secret flash drive, right? 
but to anyone in this video, it would be their worst nightmare for it to show up now. If it did, it'd be busted as bullies who drove a high school kid to suicide. Yep, it'd be a real disaster for them if that got out. They'd probably be done for in the public eye. Which means this video is Kawana's leverage. It's how he got them to go after Kawai. <sighs> you think this is enough leverage to drive people to murder, though? Kawai was killed, right? RK is the only one saying Kawai was murdered. No body's been recovered yet, either. Okay, hang on. I'm barely keeping up with this. Yeah. It's a bunch of what-ifs stacked on top of each other. But there is somebody who could potentially confirm this. Who'd that be? Someone in the video. Mamiya, for example. I've met with her at her home. If she was involved with Kawai's abduction, she could probably tell us what we want to know. I agree. Yagami Shi's provided a working theory that ties together the Kamurocho and Ijincho incidents. So if we can get Yui Mamiya to corroborate this, we should be able to extract even more information from her. Perhaps even including Kawana-san's whereabouts. Yeah. Looks like he hasn't given us the slip just yet. Man. What the hell is that guy's deal? Mikoshiba and Sawa-sensei's murders, Ahara's alibi, Kawai's disappearance. Kawana's most likely tied to everything. We'll get all the answers we need if we can find him. And I guess this is bringing us that much closer? <laughs> Hopefully. I should go see Yui Mamiya tomorrow. You should accompany him, Sugiyoroshi. Considering we seem to be kicking the investigation into high gear. With Kaito-san out of commission, I'm sure Yagami-shi could use a helping hand. I'll be fine right here. Your call, Tsukumo-kun. I'm cool with whatever. Thanks for lending him out, Tsukumo. I'll make sure he comes back in one piece. Hey, hey. Don't underestimate him as a party member. He can hold his own if you let him. Does that mean... I see.
<laughs> Yagamishi. Nope. Well... You know how they say your life flashes before your eyes when you're dying? <laughs> that shit's real talk. I saw it all, huh? Yeah. There I am, bleeding out. And suddenly I'm getting the third degree from Matsugane-san. Back when I was still just a rookie. Captain Hamura stares me down like, time to lose that pinky. And then, Igashi starts crying for me. Oh, if I'm gonna go, I ought to get a better final scene than that shit, right? Right? I'm sure it'll be rosier when the time comes for real. Glad you pulled through, man. That bastard Soma, though. Next time, he's fucked. We could have avenged Sawa-sensei if it weren't for that stupid ambush. Well, you didn't tell the cops about him, did you? Had to give the cops a statement, so I did. With a generous side of bullshit. That'll get you busted, you know. I'm joking. All I said was the truth. That I got knifed by the same twisted fuck who got Sawa-sensei. In that case, it's only a matter of time until Soma's arrested. So for now, we'll go after Kuwana, the piece that ties it all together. We just have to find him before RK does. Kuwana, huh? <sighs> He's on my shit list too, just so you know. Huh? Kuwana must have had some sort of agenda back when he first met us. In fact, it's probably because you were looking into Mikoshiba. He palled around with me all because of that. I'm just a sucker of the agency, huh? I wouldn't say that. Still... The moment it asks for me to kick turns up, this is the shape I'm in. Just focus on getting better. Tsukuma will stop by later, too. What? Sugiura gonna give me the cold shoulder? He and I are off to question Mamiya. He said he'd drive us for Majincho and everything. <laughs> Excuse me.
No. I see. I see.
Suspicious. What the? Suspicious. Excuse me. Hmm? Geogamy. Please. What? Huh. Hmm? 
Suspicious. What? Who's a good boy? I believe in you, buddy. Doing great. This way, huh? Got something? Great. This way, huh? Doing great. No way.
Excuse me. Hold on. Excuse me. Hello?
No way. すいません。Excuse me.
ありがとうございましたやっ Excuse me. So we have to see Mamiya? I'm ready whenever you are. Yep, let's go. All right, let's do this. If your theory is accurate, then Mamiya was involved in both Kawai and Mikoshiba's murders. And even if that's off, we can at least learn more about Kawana-san as a teacher.
Yes? Hi, it's Yagami. I dropped by with Genda Law the other day. Not again. I have just a few more questions I'd like to ask you. You told me the last visit would be your only one. Seriously, why do you keep showing up here uninvited? Please, just leave me alone. I suppose I should mention, I'm here today as a detective, not a lawyer. So what? And my partner here is Sugiura. He's with an agency called Yokohama 99. Never heard of him. He's based in Ijinsho. He's working a case. Maybe you saw it on the news? The murder of Serio High teacher Yoko Sawa, killed in her own apartment. You and Sawa-san were classmates in high school, is that correct? After leaving Kurokawa 13 years ago, Sawa-san moved to Ijinsho to teach. Uh, are you still there? What is it you want? I haven't seen Yoko-chan since graduation. Now go. You're barking up the wrong tree. Maybe you'll remember Kitakata-sensei then. I ran into him at Sawa-sensei's home right before the murder. He was your homeroom teacher at Kurokawa, but resigned after the Mitsuru Kusamoto incident. Just like you, he appears to be connected to Sawa-san. So why am I being singled out? Can't you just ask someone else? Believe me, it's a long list. But right now, we're here to find out how Sawa-san got mixed up in all this. You two weren't necessarily on bad terms, were you? If I had to say, we weren't on the best terms either. Uh, how convenient. Because that's a perspective I'd like to hear more about as well. My husband will be home soon. Can you keep it quick? I'll give him my best shot. Exactly. Thanks for hearing us out. Hold on just a moment. Huh. wonder what's going on. You don't think she bolted, do you? Mmm, wouldn't count on it. Should we ring again? Sorry to keep you waiting. I just wanted to clean up a little. Is your son home today? He's at English school right now. I have to pick him up soon. Doesn't your husband help with any of that? You said he'd be home soon, right? Excuse me, but you are in no place to make those kinds of comments. <laughs> Sorry. Didn't mean to pry. Well, what is it you want to ask? Have you been in contact with Kitakata-sensei lately? I haven't. He's... Someone I'd rather not have in my life. Are you surprised that he stayed in Ijinsho after resigning from the school? No, not really. How about the fact that now he's using an alias? I had no clue. But again, he has nothing to do with me. Do you remember Mitsuru Kusumoto? Yes, we were classmates in high school. He jumped off the school's roof after his classmate Shinya Kawai bullied him. I hear he's still in a coma, 13 years later. Weren't you going to ask me about Yoko-chan? I was, but there seemed to be an awful lot of Kurokawa graduates surrounding this case. And strangely enough, they were all in your class. Kitakata-sensei being the prime example as well as a guy named Akaike-san. Remember him? Well, you're right. We were in the same class. And would you say you're all familiar with Mitsuru Kusumoto's situation? Yes, but... that's not a warm memory for any of us. I understand. I'm sure it's not. The groping was orchestrated, right? Excuse you? When Akihiro Ihara grabbed you on the train, you were in on that, weren't you? The whole thing was a conspiracy, staged to play out as it did. You need to leave. Right now. Dude, what gives? 
No one would even think to consider a predator and his victim could be accomplices. It's unheard of. But if it was to establish a murder alibi, that's another story, considering how much lighter the sentence is. That way, Ihara got away with killing Mikoshiba, paying only a fraction of the price. But as luck would have it, proving it is going to require you to cooperate with us now. If you don't get up the second, I am calling the police! I mean it! It took me quite a long time to figure out how you and Ahara were connected. But once I learned Yokosawa attended Kurakawa, it all started falling into place. She was in your homeroom class. She looked after Toshio Ahara. She was the link to everyone. <sighs> but just before I could ask her about any of this, she was murdered by the Kamurocho gang. That same gang has been hunting your old teacher, Kitakata-sensei. What is it you want from me? Mamiya-san, do you have any idea where Kitakata-sensei could be? He may be Kawana the Handyman, but he hasn't answered his work line since Sawasan's murder. I don't know. He was my teacher a decade ago. I barely remember his face. Well, I'm willing to wager Kitakata-sensei still remembers yours. I'll prove it right now. Oh, God. See for yourself. No. This was recorded at Kurokawa Academy 13 years ago. Feeling nostalgic yet? It was well hidden. Your Kitakata sensei had it on a USB drive. He really didn't want this thing being seen. The most interesting part is the date. It's the very same day Mitsuru Kusumoto jumped off the school roof. And hanging out in the back, we see you, laughing and cheering right along with the other bullies. Guess it's safe to say it's a good thing your family wasn't home. Wouldn't exactly want them seeing this, would we? Has this video come up? Has Kitakata-sensei ever mentioned to you that he had it? Please! Please delete it! Considering the angle, I get the feeling that this was recorded in secret. And based on your reaction, did you even know it existed? You know what happened to Mitsuru-kun. He's been in a coma ever since what you did to him that day. But still, only one of you took the fall. Shinya Kawai took all the blame. Well, sort of, being that he got fired, Kitakata-sensei took heat too. Still, you all just moved right along with your lives. You've even got happy little families. What? Are you expecting someone? Amiya-san? Well... I knew it would happen someday. What do you mean? Looks like she wanted some company. Into a shit show. And would you look at that? Our old friend Akaike san showed up to play a part. So you are all working together. 
What should we do with them? They're the jerks who hurt Tsukumo-kun, right? Break every finger on their hand, it still won't make you even. But come on, they may have more on the way. I have an old haunt in mind we move this to. And Mamiya-san's coming with. Huh? Let's not cause a scene, okay? I'd hate for a finger to slip and post this video. Hey, you think this is your personal jail, Yagami? What makes you think you can keep bringing captives here? Well, it's the safest spot we know. Doesn't it feel good to be such a reliable friend? Yeah, Higashi, be cool. We won't be around long. Be cool? You think time's the issue? This is about respect, man. What's your call? We kicking him out? Oh, quick bit of news, Higashi-san. Kaito-san got shanked in Yokohama. What? What the fuck? Kaito Aniki? By who? You'll know once we're done explaining. Let me introduce you to Mamiya-san first. She called up her friends to come after us just a little bit ago. Yeah, and I'd do it again. I don't give a shit about that! What happened to Aniki? You better have paid him back already, Yagami. Fuck those RK assholes! And how could Aniki have let him get to him like that? Now that Higashi-san's up to speed, should we get to it? I imagine Mamiya-san doesn't want to drag this out. What do you intend to do with me? First, you'll tell us everything you know. We'll decide how to deal with you afterward. <sighs> then let's get this over with. What do you want to know? Let's start with the video. Any thoughts you'd care to share? I found it on a flash drive in Kitakata Sensei's room. Or should I say, Kawana's. I take it that means he's the one who recorded it. Yes. That means Kawana already knew back then the rest of you were bullies too? Yes. If that's the case, then why was Shinya Kawai the only student thrown under the bus for it? Kawana-san didn't show that tape to anyone else? We had no idea we were even being taped. We didn't find out about the video, or the reason he sat on it so long until way after graduating. Why exactly did he sit on it for so long? Hitakata-sensei said he kept it so... so he could teach us for the rest of our lives. What? If that video came out at the time of the incident, I'm sure life would have been hard for us then. After all, Kawaii was exposed online. And that would mean millions of yen in compensation for damages. Yeah, but you guys could have wound up in the same boat. No. I mostly would have come across as dumb kids he roped into helping him. We might have caught some flack. But people would chalk it up to kids and their cliques and move on. But that's only how I would have gone if it had come out while we were still teenagers. You're saying circumstances are different now? I have a child now. A husband, an upscale apartment. If the world sees that tape now, I'll lose it all. And what do you think would happen to my son? The son of a woman who drove a kid to attempt suicide. His life would be ruined. Hoarding is more than kids can afford. Mitsuru jumped from the school roof that very night and is still in a coma today. I told you to take it. I get it. You have that much more to lose now than when you were a kid. Same for all my classmates. Kurokawa Academy is a prestigious school, after all. Most graduates go off to great universities and land high-paying jobs. One started his own company. Others have families. And they're all in your position too, huh? If that video gets out, they lose everything. Exactly. Do you get it now? He waited for all of us to get what we wanted in life. Just so he could threaten to take it all away. 
And when that time came, he started contacting us. Every student you see in that video. When was the first time Kawana approached you? Five years ago. I was out on a walk with my son. When he came strolling up out of the blue. At first, I barely recognized him. His eyes were so hollow. Then without so much as a word, he took out his phone and played that video. He's a psychopath! Well, all you kids tormenting Mitsuru looked pretty psychopathic to me. Oh, and you're so perfect. An angel who never once acted out of line, never lashed out at someone weaker than you, or sided with the group to shut someone out. Everyone does it! We were just lucky enough to have some creep tapas picking on some kid who couldn't take it. Why did this have to happen to me? I'd say it's because bad things happen to bad people. You'll sling your barbs from a safe distance, but once you're on the other side of it, you curl up and play victim. <sighs> you said it was five years ago that Kuana showed you the video? Reminds me of something Shirosaki Sensei was looking into. What? There was this guy. I think his name was Shinya Kawai. Something about him getting snatched off the streets about five years back. Then it was you guys. You're the ones who abducted him in Kamrocho and murdered him. No! It wasn't us! We could never do something like that! Wasn't us, huh? So you're not denying he was murdered after all? Who was it then? All Sensei told us was to find Kawai somewhere in Kamurocho, then bring him back with us no matter what it took. Did Kawana tell you what he wanted with him? He needs to be there when you all beg for forgiveness. That's all he said. And if we refused, he'd leak the video. So we all went to see Kawai, but he wanted nothing to do with Sensei. Considering he'd cost him everything, that came as no surprise. But doing nothing would cost the rest of you everything too. Yes. So we had to force him into our van. After he put up a fight. Yeah. That lines up with what the local eyewitnesses said. So then what happened? Nobody's heard from the guy since. We were directed to bring him to a wharf in Yokohama. And that's where we begged for forgiveness. After that, he said we were free to go. All except Kawai. So you left him there alone with Kawana? We had to. The day after, I got a message on my phone from Sensei. What did it say? Nothing. There was only a video. It was of all of us, pushing Kawai into the van. Turns out he recorded what we did in the city. You can see all our faces so clearly. How we covered Kawai's mouth as he screamed for help, I... Even if you know all the backstory, the video is a clear-cut abduction! As I was watching it the first time, another message came in. This time, a picture. When I saw it, I just went cold. That's when I knew I would never be able to escape him. It was a picture of Kawai. Dead. Anyone who saw those messages would think we killed him after shoving him into the van. And that's how he got his real leverage on his former students. Since then, we've been at his beck and call. No matter what he tells us to do, we wouldn't dare refuse him. He's giving you orders? That man! He forces us to help him with... He makes us accomplices to murder! Murder? What the hell? Murder who, exactly? Any bullies involved in suicides. That's who Sensei's got it in for. Anyone he can find across the country. He doesn't even care how old the case is. If a student commits suicide, and bullying is suspected as the cause, He'll turn up. As far as I know, counting Kawhi, I think... I think he's killed at least seven people. Seven? 
How's he doing this? So his idea of justice is killing bullies? Across the entire country? He said that's the only way we can atone. Anyone who drives someone to suicide must always face justice. Until society comes to terms with this, he says we'll keep getting our hands dirty. That way, we might be able to save the next few Mitsurus before it's too late for them. <sighs> Not sure I should say this out loud. But I'm kind of rooting for this guy now. Mm, yeah, let's not. So was the murder of Hiro Mikoshiba part of that agenda? We know Mikoshiba drove Ahara's son to suicide four years prior. That has to be why Kuana let Ahara murder him, and how you found your role in establishing his alibi. Not just me. Grabbing Mikoshiba required a good number of people. All the people who pinned Ahara down, and even the ones who filmed it, they were working for Sensei. So that's how it went down. We had an unspoken agreement that we wouldn't directly take part in any killing. He just makes us his accomplices somehow. Like luring a target or digging a hole for a body. But the one thing we can't ever do is turn him down. If we do, he'll send his video of us abducting Kawhi to the police. And then Kawhi's body will turn up with our fingerprints all over his corpse. And we know that because he's hidden Kawhi's corpse in a freezer somewhere. He's preserving one of his murder victims? So as long as he has that, you're wrapped around his finger. Sounds to me like Kawan has had one thing on his mind for 13 years. Sitting on that video and becoming an Ijin Cho handyman was all in service of his real motive, killing off bullies. He's dragged all his former students into this hell, until the day it destroys every single one of you. Is today that day? We'll see. I'm still curious about a few things though, if you don't mind. What? There were these scumbags chasing down Kiwana called RK. What part did they play? Strangely enough, they never came up once during your confession. So tell me, why'd they come for Yoko Sawa? That I don't know for certain. But Sensei did reach out to Yoko-chan about six months ago over the phone. He was asking her about the suicide at Serio High. The suicide at Serio High? You must be talking about Toshiro Ehara. The lawsuit played out like no bullying took place, right? That the school wasn't responsible. But Yoko-chan was a teacher there, and Sensei was able to get the truth out of her. How'd he do that? What did he say? From Yoko-chan's perspective, she and Sensei were both just teachers dealing with students attempting suicide. I think that's why she let her guard down and told them everything. After learning the truth, Sensei believed Mikoshiba needed to be held accountable. So if Sawa-sensei hadn't talked to him, Ahara wouldn't have gotten involved? And none of this would be happening in Ijincho? Possibly. No, this isn't right. Sawa-sensei didn't know Kuana's identity or his objectives. She thought she was just talking through her problems with a sympathetic ex-teacher. At the very least, she sure as hell didn't deserve to die for that! It's not like we're the ones who did it. Is it? Block number. Hello? Yo, know who this is, Yagami? Kuwana? Yeah. <laughs> I heard you're looking for me. Where are you? I'm willing to meet you now if you come alone. But you have to let Mamiya go in exchange. What? All right. She's free as soon as I see you. Works for me. Then come on down to your office. I thought I'd let myself in. What? <laughs> Gotta say, this chair's pretty comfy. Pretty sure I locked up behind me when I left. Listen, I'll only meet you alone. No one else. And don't make me wait long, or I could change my mind. He told me to meet him alone. You can let mommy san go once I confirm he's there. You gonna be alright by yourself? Well, he already knows Mamiya-san's with us. I'm guessing he was watching us from somewhere. 
And I can't afford to do anything that would piss him off enough to make him disappear. Uh, got it. Oh, we'll take care of this end of it. Shouldn't you move your ass? Hope you don't mind, I let myself in. Now are you gonna hold up your end and release you, Imamiya? Come on. You and I can either try to make this work, or neither of us is gonna get what we want. So, you gonna make the call or what? Hello? Yagami-san? I'm with Kuwana. You can let Mamiya son go. Got it. Will do. Sorry about all this, Yagami. Why don't you sit down? Maybe it's time you and I had a heart to heart. How's Kaito holding up? <sighs> Kaito san's recovering in the hospital. For now. Sawa sensei is another story, though. I can hardly believe it. She was the last person I wanted to get mixed up in all this shit. If that's the case, why were you already waiting in her apartment? RK's top men were lying in wait over there to get their hands on you. So why was she the one lying on the ground? Answer me, Kawana. Was it because of you? Would you feel better if it was? How dare you? You're thinking that if you hadn't stuck your nose in her affairs, she might be at home grading her papers right now. You tell me. Is that what's eating away at you right now? Because if it is, you're mistaken. That guilt is mine alone to bear. It's my burden to carry. When I saw in the news that she had been murdered in cold blood, it felt like the whole world had stopped spinning to me. I would take it all back right now if I could. But unfortunately, to fix this, I'd need to turn the clock back further than you'd think. You mean back to when you were a school teacher? Yeah, basically. Back to when I still had a little faith in humanity. Seeing someone's life get cut short, you never really bounce back from it, do you? But I don't have to tell you that. I did my homework on you, Yagami. It seems you were a fairly accomplished lawyer. You even scored a murder acquittal. But we both know how that ended. The death of an innocent young woman. You and I are the same. We both have scars. And they're the type of scars that never fully heal. Yeah. Maybe you're right. But for Sawakun, it was 13 years ago. The very day before Mitsuru Kusamoto jumped, she stopped me in the hall so she could tell me about how serious the bullying really was. Up until that day, I just assumed it was boys being boys, teasing. I figured it was harmless, that they'd get bored with it, and then they'd move on. 
I mean, come on. Kawaii had to have been twice the size of Mitsuru. It's not like I'd seen any fighting. So I warned him not to overdo it. And eventually he would take the hint. Well, according to what I was told, you smirked, actually. Yeah. I guess that's what I did. That was too late. Sawakun had to point it out. Sensei, how could you be so blind, she asked. Her eyes were this piercing mix of pity and scorn. According to what she told me, nearly half the class was bullying Mitsuru. She said she'd seen him at the station. She made it sound like he had half a mind to jump onto the tracks right then and there. I'm not so presumptuous anymore. But back then, I used to think my students were my biggest fans. I thought I'd won their hearts and minds. But the look on Sawakun's face that day made me see the truth. I couldn't just go on smiling like nothing happened. So I decided to do my homework. The next day, I put a hidden camera in the classroom after school. So you admit that you're the one who recorded that video? Yeah. You saw it, right? Talk about the ugly side of kids. Hard to watch, wasn't it? Unfortunately, by the time I picked up the camera and saw what it recorded, Mitsuru had made his jump. I missed him by a few crucial moments. What happened in that classroom was the final straw. Later on, all the bullies were asked what happened. Each and every one of them lied. Kawai started it. It wasn't our idea, they said. To anyone outside of it, all they'd seen was Kawai forcing Mitsuru to do his bidding. So the people held culpable were Kawai and myself. The callous homeroom teacher who deliberately turned a blind eye. That was the day I began living my life with real purpose. So you couldn't forgive your students who got away with bullying. You went so far, you put aside your own life to make sure they atoned somehow. That's right. Mitsuru Kusumoto's still a vegetable. He's as good as dead. But I don't care. We have no right to forget about him. You say that, even though Sawa Sensei ended up paying for it. <laughs> I'll ask you again. Why were you at her apartment the other day? Don't dodge the question this time. I wouldn't say I dodged it. But I suppose I should explain from the beginning. Four years ago, there was a suicide at Sawakun's school. It was her own student this time. You know this, right? A student at Seiryo High School? Toshiro Ehara. Yeah. When she was in court, Sawakun had no choice but to say there wasn't any bullying. Soon as she told me that, I knew Hiro Mikoshiba would be my next target. Of course, she had no idea about any of that. When Sawakun learned Mikoshiba had been murdered, though, she reached out to me herself. What did she want? She had a sneaking suspicion that I was involved in his death. She called me a few times, prodding carefully for answers. <laughs> Quite the perceptive lady, really. And? What kind of answers did you give her? I denied any knowledge of it. But at one point, she mentioned something kind of odd. That there was a detective at the school already investigating the incident. Huh? She meant you, of course. A detective already knee-deep into the case, despite the police barely even knowing about Mikoshiba. The police are a pain in the ass, but when an out-of-town detective comes sniffing around, that's bad. 
I knew I had to act fast to get you off the trail. Although, Sawakun was a problem too. I thought I'd kill two birds with one stone. And then what? First, I found out where the two of you would be meeting up. At that little cafe. Then, I hired the Leomog to step in. <laughs> but you put up one hell of a fight. They had strength in numbers, but you would have taken out the whole group if I hadn't stepped in. Nonetheless, my other message went through. At the same time, Sawakun was handed a photo of Mikoshiba's final moments. I left that task to someone you know. Yue Mamiya. They hadn't seen each other in 13 years. Sawakun had no idea. The lady in the sunglasses. Yui Mamiya was involved in that too? Everything I did that night was intended as a warning to Sawakun. Although, I guess I didn't have to be so extreme about it. Yeah. Sawa-sensei was too smart. She must have started suspecting that you'd had something to do with Mikoshiba's murder. After all, who else could have known we'd be meeting at that cafe? She'd have traced it right back to you. Even if Sawakun had started to suspect me, I knew she wouldn't sell me out to the cops. Or two alike. The both of us lost students to suicide on our watch. That said, I couldn't bear the thought of dragging her down into the mess I started, so I scared her off, and I thought she would stay away. <laughs> the day she was killed, she called to ask if we could speak in person. I could tell something was wrong. She was on the verge of tears the whole call. Then she broke down. I asked her why, of course, but she wouldn't give me a straight answer no matter how I tried to phrase the question. So then what? Did you just waltz on over there? It doesn't seem like you. Watch it. You don't know me well enough to say that. Maybe. But I assume you had some sort of plan going in. Were you gonna confess to her? Here's the thing. If she'd figured out that I was behind Mikoshiba, and it didn't sit well with her, I would have told her every last detail. Sawaku, no. I think she would have understood me. Or at least that's what I had believed. In hindsight, I think she was forced to make that call. Under normal circumstances, I'm sure she'd have rather washed her hands of me. Hard as it is to hear, I think she called me under duress. RK probably had her hostage. That would explain the vague responses. That's probably why her voice was trembling. It's tragic. You mean it was RK? Why do they want you so badly anyway? I don't know. What? If I knew their angle, I'd be doing more than just scurrying around. You serious? Believe me, I'm just as clueless as you are, much as I hate to admit it. Honest. I'm not thrilled that a small army wants my head on a platter. Have you noticed? How RK seems to show up at the worst possible times? Someone must be pulling their strings. Then we're on the same page. At least we agree on something. <laughs> Just a sec. Yeah. I'm still over here with Yagami-san. You're not being tailed by any of his guys, are you? Okay. Then I'll meet you right now. That was Mamiya-kun. She said she's free. You guys have been true to your word. Tell Sugiura-kun that I said thank you. Now you want to go? We still have some business to settle here. Now remember, I'm the handyman here. Let me do the dirty work. I don't know what else to tell you. But you need to get out. While you still can. If you disappear into the night, I don't want to go busting my ass just to find you again. Before you leave, I'll need some contact info. A phone number would be nice. Oh, no need for that. As far as I'm concerned, this is goodbye. I wouldn't count on that. You won't get away. Now look at you!
won't get away. Don't give up. go. You guys again. Do you really need the masks? Come on, Kurokawa kids. You heard that, right? The detective here already knows everything. Kiwana! What are you going to do now? What do you think happens when he spills everything? Sounds like your lives are over, unless you shut him up. But Sensei, you'll finish the job for us, right? Huh? Is that you, Akaike? Oh, he's even got a name to your voice. But answer me, Sensei! I know, I know. I'll be the one to finish it. You just knock him out. Okay, then. Time to learn your lesson! Come on. What kind of lesson is this? Nice of you to stick around, Bamiya-san. Well, since Kiwana couldn't stay, sounds like you're not out of the woods just yet, huh? <laughs> <laughs> 